Hello, I'm here. It's February 13th. I am feeling the love. I would like to express my love for processing. My first programming love, my one true love, processing. And I'm going to express it by creating this. This is a famous shape in mathematics called the cardioid. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, cardioid like heart. It's kind of like a heart. And today, there might be some other videos after this one where I make all sorts of kind of heart patterns, but I just want to make this pattern. Now, if you want to learn more about this shape and where it appears in mathematics, I want to point out to you this wonderful YouTube channel called Mythologer. Uh, Mythologer has a video called Times Tables, Mandelbrot, and the heart, the heart of mathematics. And my heart is with mathematics and processing and code and all that sort of stuff. Now, I should also point out that rendering an animation of these times tables in processing has been done before, uh, and most notably by Simon Tiger. And uh, one of the things I love about processing this year is we, there's been this worldwide set of processing community days. Recently in Amsterdam, Simon presented his work on creating this very large poster about the times tables um, at processing community day Amsterdam. I was just at processing community day in New York over the weekend, and I'm like, my heart is definitely full of like love and wonder with all the things people are doing with processing. So this video is dedicated to all the people who are working on processing and P5JS and fellowships and, and everything. So this, this shape, um, it has, you, you can find it in looking at the ways um, light reflects around a circle. Uh, I mentioned the Mandelbrot set. Um, you can see it right here as in this bulb of the, the sort of like first bulb of the Mandelbrot fractal set is a cardioid shape. And it's kind of amazing that it appears in this context of timetables. So, uh, and then I think we're going to, if you watch the end of the Mythologer video, there's this like animation at the end. And I was just like, whoa, that looks so cool. And I kind of want to show it to you now. But I'm just going to program it. And I, hopefully it'll be at the end of this video. Because somehow I'll program it. So let me talk about how this works. OK, so <laughs> happy, happy almost, happy February 13th, everybody. I love processing. <laughs> OK, now. Let's say, and this is good timing because in my course at NYU this week, just today, we were, yes, yesterday we were talking about polar coordinates, and I'm going to need to make heavy use of polar coordinates for this particular visualization. So we're going to start with a circle. And we are going to divide this circle equally into uh, parts, basically, almost like a pie chart. But the way I'm going to represent that is just by spacing out, equally spacing out a set of dots. I have one, I have two. Now I need eight more. So I need four along the top and four along the bottom. This is for me to get 10. So one, two, three. No, that's three. <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now let me number them. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I want to do times tables, meaning I want to multiply each one of these numbers by 2. And whatever number I get, then I want to connect it to that. So 2 times 0 is what? 0. So that's just here. 1 times 2 is what? 2. So that connects here. 2 times 2 is what? It's 4. 3 goes to 6. Uh, 4 goes to 8. Uh, 5 goes to 10. There's no 10. Well, we wrap around. We use the modulo operator. So we use the remainder, basically, to, uh, if we keep counting, like this would be 9, 10, 11, 12. So 5 goes to 10, 6 goes to 12, 7 goes to 14, and 8 goes to 16, 9 goes to 18, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, uh, yes. So you can see here that this shape is sort of starting to emerge. So let's first start by just creating exactly this. All right, so let me start writing some code. Mm, circle. Mm, I, OK, so now what I need is I need a number of points. So let me call this like, um, this is the, what is this, the scale, the divisor? I don't know what to call this. Total points. Just call it total. All right, so and I'm going to make it a float. Uh, let's keep it as an integer for right now. I'm going to change it to a float in a little bit. You'll see why. So now I'm going to, uh, I need to do a loop and draw all those points. Uh, I want the center of my uh, visualization. I want everything to be, well, I want everything to be oriented around the center. Uh, so I'm going to translate to the center, width divided by 2, height divided by 2. Um, and then this is where that polar coordinate thing comes in. Um, I need to figure out the way I'm going to find all those points 
is right. There are how many slices of pie here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, ten. How convenient. So each one of these angles is two pi divided by ten. So that's how much I need to. That's where each one of these points goes. Um, so I'm going to say um, uh, a delta, the sort of like delta angle. I'll just call it delta equals two pi divided by total. And then um, another, actually another thing I way I could do is I could just use map. So I could say angle equals map i, which goes between zero and total to between zero and two pi. That might be an easier way. Then I don't actually need this delta. And then um, I need a radius. So which is basically I need to know like well how what is the radius of this circle that I'm visualizing. And so for that, um, let's just make the radius the width of the window divided by 2. So let's call that uh, r, which is the width of the window divided by 2. And then I want to say uh, x equals r times cosine of the angle, uh, y equals r times sine of the angle. And I will refer you to my video about polar coordinates to understand these particular formula. And then the next thing I just want to do is draw a point. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make an ellipse. Fill 255, ellipse at x, y, and oh, oh! <laughs> Thank you, Ben Fry. I'm going to call this circle. <laughs> There's a circle function now. Uh, 16. Oh, I love using these. There we go. Look, you can see there's my 10 dots around the circle. Now, I probably want to be able to see that circle. That would be nice, too. So let me say uh, stroke 255, um, no fill. Uh, ellipse, and this the translate needs to come before drawing this. I just want to draw, ah, no, it's a circle, it's a circle. <laughs> At uh, 0, 0, uh, r times 2, right? Because uh, the circle function expects the diameter, which is the radius times 2. So now we can see, there we go. Oh, mwah. I have my circle with all my points. Now I need to do my math thing. All right, so uh, I'm going to have a value. I'm going to call this n. So n is going to be uh, what is the times amount that I'm going to multiply each number by. So there's total. There's a lot of different parameters in the system, and you can play with them to create all sorts of different kinds of patterns. Hopefully, we'll see some of those by the time I get to the end. But right now, I'm going to make this a two times table to try to get that heart, that cardioid. So I'm going to call that. Maybe I should call that factor. Let's call that factor. Um, let's, I'm going to put that up here, uh, int, int factor equals 2. And I, I'm sure there's a nice way I could do all this together, but I'm going to do this as a separate loop. So now I'm going to do this again. I mean, obviously I'm just re... I, I will refactor this later, as I like to say. But what I want to do is I want to say um, A is I. Like, I want to go from point A to point B, which is I times factor. Those are essentially my indices of like where, where I'm connecting the lines. So 0 goes from 0, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 4. And then I need a function. And actually, this could be really useful for me to write a function that returns a p-vector, giving me a, given, a p-vector for any given index. So, uh, so get vector for any given index. And then, so basically, I can say the angle is map that index, which goes between 0 and total, between 0 and 2 pi. And then uh, the vector equals a new p vector at, and this should be a global variable, r. Um, I cannot set the width up here, because it doesn't know what the width is. So I'm going to make this r here. And then I'm going to say r equals width divided by 2. I, you know, I could make that an argument to this function, but I'm just going to keep that as a global variable. Make a new p, p vector at r, r times cosine. Oh, actually, p vector class has something in it. Uh, p vector from angle, angle, that'll make the vector pointing in that direction. And then I just want to multiply it by the r to set it to be that. And then, right, so I'm using some vector stuff here, which I realize is now maybe a little bit beyond the scope of if you were coming to this video just without knowledge of how the p vector class works in processing, or in p5, which is a p5 vector. It's just an object that has an x and a y. So it's a nice way for me to store the x and the y together. And I can make the x and y components from an angle, and then I can scale that by multiplying it by some radius. So it's really, it's really got that sort of polar coordinate thing built into it. 
So I'm going to multiply it by r and say return r. And then actually, since I'm here refactoring this, <laughs> I can say right here, p vector v equals, what did I call that function? Get vector based on i, and then I should be able to say v dot x, v dot y. So I basically just took that code and put it into a function, because I'm probably going to need to do this quite a bit. And I don't want to return r, I want to return v. Ooh, this is, I'm, I'm liking what I'm doing so far. <laughs> I think this might actually work. Okay, so now I want to say get vector for i, and then get vector for i times factor. But guess what? It's not just i times factor, right? What, so first of all, why, oh, this should be a p vector. This should be a p vector. So it's not just i times factor, although I, I guess I could rewrite this function. Um, it depends on where I want to put this. Actually, I'm going to put it here. So I, I need somewhere to deal with the fact that when I do 6 times 2, I get 12, but I really just want 2, because 12 divided by 10 is 1 remainder 2, so 12 modulo 10 is 2. The modulo operator, which I have a video, thank you, Golan Levin, uh, about modulo is also linked now up there somewhere in a corner of this screen. Okay. So now, right here, I could just add that here. Modulo total. Okay. There we, all right. So I don't think I actually drew those lines, but if this is still working, that's there. Now I should be able to say line a dot x, a dot y, b dot x, b dot y. There we go. Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> Why is that? I mean, it's not backwards. Oh, because I started over there. Interesting. So a couple things I could do. I could just call like the scale function to flip it the other way. I mean, what's backwards, what's forwards, who knows? I'm just saying, in terms of watching that mythology video, <laughs> it was oriented the other direction. I also feel like R needs to be a little bit smaller than the actual size of the window. So let's make R equal, like let's give it a little bit of buffer, like 16 pixels. That's a little bit nicer to see. Uh, again, my, 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 my visual talent skills are so non-existent, and I know people are watching this who are designers and with artistic vision, and you will make something beautiful out of this, and I can't wait to see. So, ah, ah, aha, I saw a chat message go by, which is really quite smart, which is that I could just here, if this is the angle, right, this is the angle, all I have to do is just, if I wanted to start on the other side, I could just add pi, being 180 degrees. Oh, it looks right. Okay, now, now we're getting somewhere. So the mythologer uses the number 200. I'm, I'm just going to, let's go to 20 and see what we get. Ooh, um, that's kind of interesting. Let's go to 200. Wow, there we go. Mwah, mwah. There is the cardio. Ooh, that is like beautiful, just on its own. And by the way, what's interesting about this is this is very similar, if not precisely the pattern you would see if there were a light source here and it reflected a, a, and bounced around this particular, um, this particular uh, circle. So, um, okay. All right. Oh, it needs to be red. It needs to be oriented the other way. It needs to have like an arrow through. It needs to have like a little baby Cupid flying by. Lots of things. All right. But I want to make this animation. So there's a, there's a bunch of different things we could do. For example, this, this could be a variable. So um, let's just look at that really briefly just to see. I'm going to say float. I'm going to make it a variable here equals 200. Or I'm going to say, sorry, int total equals uh, map. Uh, mouse x, I'm going to take the map function, mouse x goes between 0 and width, and I'm going to map that between 0 and 200, um, and then I'm going to convert that to an integer. So now as, uh, whoops, oh, so then, good point, this, let's have this take a total, uh, and then the get vector function um, should have the total passed in. Uh, maybe there's a different way of doing it, but now we can see basically based on the number of circles we can see uh, as I move the mouse left and right that increasing. So that's one way I could animate this. Um, I think it's probably us to decide like a, a, a different way of animating this, which I will get to in a second, I think is possibly more interesting and it's varying the factor. Like what happens if this is a three times table? By the way, we could just try that right now. So let me make this back to 200. And let's make the factor 3. Look at that. Interesting. Breaking news. I'm being told, told from the chat that this shape is called a nephroid. So this is a nephroid. And if I would go to, uh, say, the factor 4, 
Look what I've got now. So this, and interestingly enough, we could actually make these floating point numbers. Let's just see if I have to change anything in my code if I do that. I'm going to, I think. But um, let's see. So I'm going to do this. All right, so immediately we're stuck here like, oh, these are no longer integers. So what if I make this a float and this a float? Let's have everything be floats. There we go, that worked. Let's, let's be sure about this, right? So that was factor three. Let's try factor 2.5. Yeah, this is looking like ah, it should look. So this is actually doing the same exact math, but it's allowing for the spaces in between. So what if I have 2.2? That could, should connect to 4.4. .4. Um, and we can do modulo also because 7.1 would connect to, to 14.1. Modulo 10 would still be, sorry, 7.1 would connect to 14.2. Modulo 10 would still be uh, 4.2. So this works with floating points. And now we can create that animation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the global variable factor. I'm going to start it at 0. And then I'm just going to slowly over time say factor plus equals 0.01. Interesting. Oh, there's the cardioid. There's the nephroid. Isn't that lovely and beautiful and amazing? I just, I just love this. Now, think of the possibilities. I have done the most basic thing to just create this animation. And at some point, it's going to get, it's like really crazy stuff that's going to start to happen. But there's so many other parameters. There's ways you could think about color here. Uh, I'm going to make a JavaScript version of this that will run the browser that I will publish that you can look at, which is basically exactly the same code. Um, I could look at this forever. I hope you enjoyed this dedication, long distance dedication to my true love, the heart of mathematics and processing. Mwah.